FPL game week seven, my team selection. Of course, I played my wild card in game week six and it did not go well. We'll have a look at how that went. We'll have a look at how my team is lining up for game week seven. We'll talk about some potential transfers, a maybe even a minus four. I am already considering one week after my wild card. That is not how I expected my season to start. It's not exactly what I wanted to be doing this week. Let's talk about why my team selection for game week seven, my lineup and who I'm going to captain this week. What is up everyone, FBL Harry here. Before we dive in, 2,000 likes is the aim to subscribe if you are new around here. And today it is my game week seven team selection and I have already reviewed earlier this week my game week six wild card, but let's do it again. We scored 38 points. That was 20 below the safety score. I got a big red arrow from 150K to just outside the top 500K. I had a game week rank of basically 8 million. Everything that could have gone wrong basically went wrong for me. Three players got a return in Dominic Solanke. We had Semenyo and then we had Brian and Bumo. Brian and Bumo, the only one of those three to actually pick up any bonus points on top of the goal that they did score as well. We do have a few players who are a slight risk going into the weekend, particularly like Luis Diaz. We've got Smith Rowe going away to Manchester City. The defence all blanked despite having fantastic fixtures on paper. Of course, double Arsenal finding a way to concede not just once, but twice to Leicester, but then managing to keep a clean sheet against PSG in the Champions League. I am over it now. I promise I'm not bitter about it anymore. Not the best start to the wild card, but we're going to have a look at potential plans going into next week because I still like the team on paper. I'm still happy with most of the players I picked, most of them. So let's have a look at my potential routes next week. So as I said, the big player that I have a issue with in my starting lineup going into game week seven is Luis Diaz. And that is the same I spoke about in my transfer plans earlier on in the week. Now, if I did decide to sell Luis Diaz, there are a few things I could do. I could, of course, just go to a player of a similar price, someone like an Eze. I could go to someone like a Brennan Johnson, who's very popular or something like that. I could free up a little bit of money and don't laugh. Go for someone like Bruno Fernandes, who from game week eight does have a really nice run of fixtures and potentially might have a new manager bounce by the time that does come around after the international break. However, I do think if I do decide to sell Luis Diaz, it will be to go and get Cole Palmer this week. Since Cole Palmer made his debut for Chelsea, he has more goal contributions than any other player in the league. Yes, more than any other player. He has more goal contributions, goals or assists than Erling Haaland since he made his Chelsea debut. He is, of course, cheaper than Haaland. He is, of course, cheaper than Salah. He is a similar price to Saka. And I really want Cole Palmer in my team. Now, it is partly because he's just scored four goals. That has really reignited the fire in me to make sure I've got him in my team. But I do still think that we've known for a while that he is a good asset. I just haven't had a place to go and fit him into my lineup. Now, the features going forward are not as good, right? Brighton at home was a great fix for him and they massively played into Chelsea's hands. Forest at home, Liverpool, Newcastle, Man United and then Arsenal in the next five is not quite as good. However, from game week 12 onwards, they do have a really nice run. And Luis Diaz will continue to be an issue for me. Whether I sell him this week, whether I sell him next week, I'm going to have issues every week about whether I'm certain he is going to start matches or not. So with that in mind, I am potentially looking to make that move. He also started in the Champions League on Wednesday evening, which puts a little bit of doubt in my mind about whether he's going to start in the Premier League on Saturday as the, uh, the 12.30 kickoff. The only benefit is that we should know going into the deadline whether he starts or not, because we tend to get a little bit of early team news on the deadline stream of Liverpool or of a team like Manchester City going into it when they are the 12.30 kickoff. So I'm not going to be pulling any transfers going into sort of Thursday or Friday. I am going to wait until we see whether Luis Diaz starts or not going into the Saturday deadline. But if he is benched, this is what the plan is probably going to be. So of course, to do that transfer, I'm 2.8 million short of making that transfer now and I need to free up some money. The first thing will be downgrading Trent Alexander-Arnold and there are two options. I could go with the safer option, which feels like Van de Ven. Spurs are actually really good defensively. They are the fifth best defense so far this season for underlying expected goals conceded, which is a massive improvement on the negativity that we've spoken about with the Spurs defense in the past, last season under Ange, how they don't like to defend and they're focused on attack. They are still focusing on attack and have created more XG going forward than any other team, but are the underlying fifth best defense so far this season. So Van de Ven, with two assists. Yes, those two assists have been just running from the central of the of the pit all the way to, to the goal line and then cutting it back to someone else. But I still like him at 4.5 with the fixtures they do have coming up. The other one, if I need that point one, is someone like 8 Nori. Van der Ven is probably predicted to rise in price before we get to Saturday. So I might be forced to go with someone like 8 Nori. Now, 
Wolves have been horrible so far this season, but they've also had the most difficult run to the start of the season out of any team pretty much in the entire league. And we only expect them to get better defensively once we see a slightly better run of fixtures, which is what they have starting now, but particularly from about game week 8, 9, 10, things start to look a little bit better. Of course, Aitnori Norris scored in the weekend and he also had a big chance where he didn't score against Aston Villa the week before. 4.4 million, he's always been a decent FPL asset and I like him. Add a cheaper option if I can't afford Van de Ven if he does go up to the likes of 4.6 million, which is predicted, it was predicted last night on Wednesday. It's predicted to go on Thursday and Friday as well. Then the other transfer. So those two transfers, unfortunately, still leaves me 0.3 million short of what I want to do if I go Van de Ven. So I'd have to free up a little bit more money. And there's two obvious places I can go and do that. Downgrading Smithrow to Mavadidi or potentially Carvalho of Brentford or potentially Dibbling of Southampton or potentially Rogers of Aston Villa. But I do think it'll be Mavadidi with the fixtures that they've got over going with any of those others. It could be Carvalho just because he's 4.8 and maybe I just take the money and downgrade him a little bit further. Mavadidi won. I would say Carvalho number two, Rogers number three, and Dibbling number four in my ranking of who's most likely to come in if I do sell Smith Rowe. Of course, Smith Rowe is a player I like. I've got value tied up in him, but we do know the fixtures are not as good going forward. And I do like Mavadidi. I spoke about him on my wild card, and I just wish that I've gone with Mavadidi over Smith Rowe now and just left the money in the bank because I could do these two free transfer these two transfers with my free transfers this week rather than it being a minus four, which it would be if I did all three of these this week. Of course, I could downgrade Smith Rowe. That would free up the 0.3 million. The other thing would be selling Chris Wood. Of course, Chris Wood goes away to Chelsea this week. I don't mind that as a fixture. And he has some nice games coming forward as well. I could go to someone like Delap of Ipswich, who is very popular. He's up to 5.6, but that would easily free up enough money. He scored twice this week and is on a really nice run of form and has a nice run of fixtures as well. The only reason I don't love this is because I still think Chris Wood is a good option for the next few weeks. And I have penciled in a move to a Brighton forward in either Welbeck or Jao Pedro, who have a really nice run of fixtures from game week 12, when the Nottingham Forest fixtures start to turn a little bit worse. Now, I like Smith Rowe as well, and I've got value tied up in him, and he might feel like a longer term hold, where I'm almost certain I'll sell Chris Wood at some point. But I do like the Chris Wood to Brighton forward in a few weeks, and I think Chris Wood is a decent enough option. So right now, if I do hear that there's likely to be no Luis Diaz in that Liverpool team, I do think the most likely scenario will be Luis Diaz to Palmer, Trent to Eight Nori probably because Van der Ven's likely to go up in price and then Smith Rowe to Mavadidi. Now, that would be for a minus four. And the more simple thing I could do is just sell Luis Diaz to Mavadidi with my one free transfer and not do the Trent to cheaper defender and go and not buy Cole Palmer this week for a minus four because... I would, a Mavadidi would come into my team in any of the situations. And of course, Luis Diaz might drop in price, so I would save the price for. So the effect of other two transfers that I'm not doing this week would be Smith Rowe to Cole Palmer, which looks fantastic, but I would be benching Chris Wood as a result. And it would be Trent to an eight Nori. So I've effectively got, do I think that eight Nori plus Cole Palmer with a minus four included in that is better than Trent and Chris Wood? And I'm not certain it is. I think. I'm going into game week eight. I'd be happy that I just did the transfers and I had Cole Palmer in my team for the long run. And maybe Chris Wood gets on the bench this week. But if I do this move and I look at it this way and slightly restructure the way I make the transfers, do I think that Luis Diaz to Mavadidi plus then, you know, the combination is what I'm really looking at. Do I think that Trent and Chris Wood or do I think Ain't Nori and Cole Palmer with the minus four included. Let me know in the comments which of those sides you think we'd go on. Because if Luis Diaz is benched, Mavadidi will be in my team, I think, pretty much certain, certainly going into the deadline if he gets benched. So it is just the other two parts. So again, let me say that again and let me know in the comments which of these you prefer. Because I'm always interested to hear. Because I look at it and think, oh yeah, I've got to buy Cole Palmer. But then I was thinking last night, well, if I restructure the chance transfers and I just do Luis Diaz to Mavadidi, or even Smith Road to Mavadidi, I could do the others for two free transfers going into game week eight. So eight Nori and Palmer with a minus four included. Or would you just have Trent and Chris Wood and do them for two free transfers next week? Of course, if Luis Diaz starts, I'm not going to be making any transfers. I don't think this week. But of course, I need a plan in case he is. So just to run through what that means for my lineup, we're going to stick with David Ryer in goal at home to Southampton. They conceded twice to Leicester. They kept a clean sheet against PSG. They're now going to concede to Southampton and they kept a clean sheet in their most difficult game. But I'm going to keep David Raya, Fabianski on the bench. We're doubling up on Arsenal in defence. We've got Gabriel. His goal threat is there. 
I mean, I'm just going to set and forget. I'm going to play double R's defense in every single game week between now and pretty much I play my next wild card or I sell one of them, which I don't think is going to be the case unless they have a blank game week, for example, and I have to sell Ryan because I need a goalkeeper. So I basically don't need to cover that in my team selection video every week. Those two will be there. Trent is in at the moment, and I don't plan on going for Luis Diaz unless we hear that he's benched. Of course, he started in the Champions League on Wednesday evening. So there is a chance that Gakpo starts in the Prem, given that that is now three games running that we've seen Luis Diaz start. He started the weekend, and then he started midweek as well. But at the moment, unless we hear negative news, we don't hear anything negative. I'm going to be keeping Trent. I'm going to be keeping Luis Diaz. So Trent is in away at Crystal Palace, a 12 30 kickoff. I don't love the early kickoff, but I do like the fixture. Then we've got Rico Lewis. Now, I'm hearing a lot of mixed opinions in the comments on Twitter about Rico Lewis as an asset. Now, I think Rico Lewis playing two out of three games is a better asset than any of the other 4.5 million defenders in the game. So that's why I'm happy that I've got Rico Lewis. He picked up another assist in the Champions League. They can keep clean sheets with the fixtures they've got, although they do love to concede pretty stupid goals at times. I'm happy that I've got him, but every week I am trying to make a judgment call about whether I think he's going to start or not. So I have got Lewis in here. I do think there's probably a 60% chance he starts because I'm kind of of the opinion that he's young and he's very important to Manchester City now without Rodri. And he can play left back, he can play right back, he can play in midfield. There are so many places that I think Lewis can fit in. Maybe I'm trying to convince myself because I own him that he is going to start, but I am going to start him because I've got Mikalenko at home to Newcastle on the bench or Greaves away at West Ham. And I just don't think they're better than Lewis. Of course, if we get news before the deadline that Lewis is not going to start, then I will bench him for Mikalenko. But at the moment, we are just going to start him. And it's a great fit if he does get on the pitch. I do think he'll probably start, but I do think it might be in midfield again rather than at fullback where actually he gets pretty far forward. So I'm going to start Lewis anyway. Into midfield again, it's the same four at the moment. So Semenyo was so good on Monday night. They have a few difficult fixtures over the next few weeks after the Leicester game, but I do plan on just benching him in those games anyway. He is a long term hold for me. He looks so important to that Bournemouth team. I watched Bournemouth, I think that's the first time I've watched a full 90 minute game of Bournemouth so far this season against Southampton. Yeah, maybe it's slightly inflated because it was against Southampton, but they looked so good and Semenyo was so involved. He looked like a player. Full of confidence. So I'm absolutely happy that I've got him. Of course, Leicester have just conceded four to Arsenal. And they've been okay, Leicester. But still think there'll be chances here. Saka in at home to Southampton. He's not exploding in terms of returns. But he's Mr. Consistent. And there's no way I'm going to sell him. It feels like over-management to go and sell Saka. I do want to get to the structure of Haaland, Saka and Palmer. Rather than having to keep swapping between the likes of Saka to Palmer to Foden to Son. I want the two premium midfielders, I think. The reason for that is we've got players like Semenyo and we've got players like Brian Abumo who look like an absolute cheat code at the moment. He cannot stop scoring. Wolves at home this week is another good fixture. Again, he's on set pieces, he's on penalties. Really, really happy with him as a choice and wild card. He was one of the most nailed players. And if you don't own him, I still would advise buying him. And then it's Luis Diaz. So Luis Diaz is about the only player in my starting lineup that I'm more nervous about than Rico Lewis. Luis Diaz, of course, starts in the Champions League. If, he, if we get news going into the deadline that he's not going to start, he will go to Mavadidi and then it's just if I do Smith Rowe to Palmer and Trent to Aignori as a minus four on top of that. Again, I asked earlier on, but if you've just skipped to the team, let me know. What do you prefer, Aignori and Palmer for a minus four or just play Trent and Chris Wood? Because Chris Wood would be the one that would drop to the bench if I did the minus four. Apart from that, Smith Rowe away at City is on the bench. Maybe wasn't the best selection on wildcard. I should have taken the money in it, but... It is what it is. If Luis Diaz had scored, I wouldn't be thinking the same thing. Then we go up front. Haaland is in, of course, home to Fulham. Solanke away at Brighton without Van Heck. I do expect goals for Spurs in that game, whether it's Brandon Johnson, whether it's Madison, whether it's Kulisevsky. Will Son be back or will it be Dominic Solanke? Hopefully it is. I'm very happy with him as a pick. Just need a slightly bigger haul, right? Six points is nice, but I need a six plus bonus or a goal and an assist or something like that from him over the next few weeks. But I'm not complaining. I'm very happy with him. And then Chris Wood. Chelsea have been great this season apart from in game week one, but they have been leaking goals. Even the games they've won comfortably, like the Brighton one and the Wolves one, they've still conceded twice in those games. So I am going with Chris Wood at the moment. He should be on penalties as well away at Chelsea. So let's hope. I mean, I'm going to say hope. I hope he gets something. But as a Chelsea fan, I also partly hope he doesn't. Those of you who watch the channel know that my fiance Holly is a Nottingham Forest fan. We will be at the game together on Sunday. Chelsea versus Nottingham Forest. I will be cheering on Chelsea. I might be cheering on Cole Palmer. 
with one eye on Chris Wood as well, hoping he doesn't score, but maybe a little bit of positive bias. If we're 4-0 up, then maybe Chris Wood can go and get a consolation goal or something like that. Anyway, that is the team selection. I'm pretty happy with it. It will all boil down to whether we get news that Luis Diaz isn't going to start when we're on the deadline stream on Saturday morning. Make sure you subscribe to get a reminder of the final decisions video tomorrow, that deadline stream on Saturday morning as well. 2,000 likes is the aim. Subscribe if you are new around here. Thank you for watching. Drop any questions about your team as well in the comment section down below. And I'll be back again very soon.